your thoughts. We were having a, a bit of a debate earlier uh, about whether this is a defensive move or an offensive move. I'd say it's a little bit of both. So, of course, critics will say this is defensive, right? They're pivoting away from some of the nightmare PR crisis that they've had in the past month around the Facebook whistleblower. But I'd also argue it's offensive as well, Andrew. And the reason is Facebook's business model is highly dependent on Google and Apple's operating systems. So this is a signal to Wall Street that they're trying to build out and away from that to give them more control over their own destiny. It's also a signal to Wall Street that they're trying to pivot away from being solely dependent on advertising. Right now, especially mobile advertising, it's about 98% of their business. Long term, there's a lot of threats to that. We see how turbulent the advertising business can be during a global pandemic, or quite frankly, when another player that you're relying on, in this case, Apple, changes their terms. And so it's defensive because they don't want to get caught up in this PR crisis anymore, but definitely an offensive move to tell Wall Street, hey, we're thinking about how this business can be reliable long term. I was making the argument earlier that it was actually less for investors and the public and more for recruits to try to effectively make the firm uh, feel younger, find younger engineers who want to be part of the next great thing, if this is the next great thing. But one of the challenges by going public this way that I wonder about is, are they, is it, are they better off doing it in public like this? Meaning, that, you know, I know there are developers who watch the Facebook Connect uh, event and everything else, but there's not a lot of developer stuff that you can do yet. There's not a lot of things that anybody can do with this uh, information. Well, on the front end, that's right. I don't think users are going to be able to experience what they're calling the metaverse for a really long time. In fact, an executive told CNBC yesterday that it won't be for up to 15 years until users will experience the metaverse. But what Facebook would argue is that they do need to, as you're saying, put this up there for recruiting now because it will take 15 years to build. They do need to start bringing in a talent pipeline of engineers, of developers, of designers to start getting this thing off the road. And I'd say in terms of the product timeline here, Andrew, Facebook said that they're gonna start breaking out its Reality Labs revenue starting next quarter. The reason they're doing that, I think it's not just to lure talent and convince them that there's movement, although I agree with you that's part of it. It's also to give Wall Street a new metric by which to measure Facebook on that will keep them optimistic. If you start low, that number is only going to grow higher incrementally, and it's going to make Wall Street excited. The advertising revenue right now is not looking good. Sheryl Sandberg said that it's going to take at least a few years before they can figure out how to combat the changes from Apple's IDFA. Well, if that impacted their revenue growth quarter over quarter this quarter, you should expect it to continue impacting them. And so this isn't just about recruits, although I think it's a big part of it. I also think it's about giving Wall Street some new form of optimism for trading quarters moving forward. What do you think Washington thinks of this? Do they say, does this change their perception of Facebook in a good way? Or do they say, oh, my if they control the whole metaverse, if that's the digital universe we all live in in the future, we really have to regulate this company. It's definitely the latter. This is freaking lawmakers out. Their argument here is, look, Facebook didn't build it right the first way. How do we trust them to build it right the second way? And I heard from someone on Capitol Hill, Andrew, that told me something fascinating, which is this. They had the opportunity to signal to Washington that they were really focused on being collaborative and building out a governance structure when it came to their digital wallet, Novi. But last week, Facebook launched Novi without the DM association, without the governance structure in place. And to them, that was a signal that they're going to move forward with whatever their product roadmap is, even when governance isn't in place. Now, of course, on that video debuting Meta yesterday, Mark Zuckerberg had Nick Clegg, their VP of Global Policy, on for about five minutes to talk about governance and to talk about things like privacy and protecting user data. But the fear in Washington is that that is just lip service, it's all talk, and that there's no real walk behind their actions.